Hey guys, Canadian Zang Geek back again, and this time we're going to be going over a, some controversial pickups. Um, they're pretty much all pirates. Yar! <laughs> Let's take a look. So, um, a lot of people are in a lot of debate over whether pirate games are, you know, should be sold or made or anything. They affect the market and everything. Um, I agree to an extent. Um, if uh, anybody that's willing to spend big money on a, uh, a high ticket item game should know, you know, whether what they're looking for you know anybody that's willing to spend like two hundred and fifty dollars on earthbound is gonna research the hell out of it because that's a big amount of money and to someone that two hundred fifty dollars is not a big amount of money to probably not gonna care if they just blew two hundred fifty dollars they probably drive you know a Porsche <laughs> or into uh, their garage where they have nine other Porsches but um, it's uh, it's a little bit of a tricky topic, but um, I'm actually for um, reproductions and uh, ROM hacks and homebrew and pirates because there's a lot of telltale signs on all of them. The plastics are usually cheap, the artwork is usually blurred, you know, um, the cartridges, especially on the ones that um, you get from like you know a lot of Asian sites and stuff um, they produce their own carts for them they don't uh, you know cannibalize uh, existing cartridges so usually they have no um, company logo on them no nothing um, and you can tell pretty easily um, so I've been picking up a few because they've been super cheap and uh, you know, consider this my huge disclaimer that these are what these are, so there is <laughs> proof that that's what they are. And even the boards too, if you look at them, there's a lot of telltale signs. Um, most of the uh, the pirates that you see nowadays are manufactured because the retro scene is becoming, you know, so popular now that it's not just guys doing it in their basement, it's like warehouses making them. and. Uh, they have like a, a lot of like black enamel like covering areas and you know you don't see that on uh, original cartridges um, but anyways yeah I'll get right into it all of these that I've picked up um, they're around the five dollar range and uh, they're specifically just for my own enjoyment to play um, to have a cart to put it in the machine and everything like that and uh, I, I don't care. <laughs> I have no intention to sell them. <laughs> um, and yeah, like I said, I'm showing it right now, so it's pretty hard. And most of them, you know, you could tell right away, or they didn't even come in that format for that really reason. But anyways, first off, um, I got Little Samson for the uh, Famicom. Now, there's no way you can confuse this with an actual one, because one, the Famicom version is a uh, uh, little, little something. It doesn't say Little Samson, and you know, it uh, it definitely doesn't have this. I don't know if you can see it, but it, it doesn't. Normal Famicom cards don't have that stupid embossed uh, uh, English on the back like <laughs> that. But anyways, um, yeah, Little Samson. Uh, I like. It's a super fun game. Five bucks, whatever. I'm not gonna spend six hundred dollars on a Nest cart for just to play. That's something that you know you keep locked up in a, behind glass, and you are scared to look at it because you're worried it's gonna depreciate. Um, I would never buy that. There are so many other things I would buy before I would buy that. 
even at like half the price, I, I wouldn't buy it. But yeah, no problem with me, five bucks. Uh, another pricey item like that. Um, Panic Restaurant for the uh, uh, Famicom. Once again, you can't really confuse it for anything. Uh, plays great on my Retron 5. All of these play great on my Retron 5. And uh, I, like I said, have no problem with it. If, uh, if you actually are interested in uh, checking out some of these, um, I got all of them from AliExpress, which is kind of like the Asian eBay. Um, you're probably going to wait like a month and a half or two months for it to get to you, but the price is right. Usually the shipping is free and it opens up a lot of doors for someone that doesn't have a lot of money and just wants to play the games. Right? Um, next one I got was uh, Truxton for the uh, Mega Drive, not the Genesis. Um, a lot of these two are not North American. Um, format because it's in Asia right so you're getting those versions of it but plastic is very cheap um, the back is actually pretty funny it doesn't have the screws in it it just says like 16-bit and they're horribly obvious which I kind of appreciate because I want them to be known that they're you know reproductions and you know pirates but uh, Oh yeah, the color is just horrible. It's washed out. It looks like someone used like a piece of crap printer to do it, um, or you know maybe since it's in Asia, a sweatshop, and they got uh, 500 Asians painting it on. I mean, I didn't say that. I'm sorry. Um, and along with that one, I got Musha for the Genesis. Super fun uh, shooter, just like Truxton. Um, very pricey game once again I think it's up to two hundred and six dollars or something like that now if not more um, I would never spend that much money uh, I would have to find it in the wild and even then I think I would probably trade it to someone because I'm very happy to just play this um, I'm into I, I'm not so much collecting I'm more gaming I guess uh, I've said it many times before that uh, I like to have a certain amount in my collection and I just kind of swap things in and out and it's more of what I like to play than what I'd like to see on my shelf. Um, this one is uh, from the same uh, seller again so it's still got the cheap you know garbage back with no screws it's just like glued together. Um, Alien Soldier for the Mega Drive. Uh, we never got this in North America, um, yeah, which is a very like it's a shame because it's an amazing game. If you haven't played Alien Soldier, I highly recommend it. It's it's such a gem for the system. Um, it's like a big sprite side scroller shoot 'em up, um, and all the boss battles are fantastic. It's the stages are just like a footnote on the game. The big word shines is all the boss battles. Very, very cool. Um, grab these two, and these ones are really wonky cases because they're um, not the PAL uh, Mega Drive, they're the Japanese Mega Drive, which is even weirder like configuration for the carts. Um, and the screws are just, they're really weird. Um, I got the Mutant League Football and Mutant League Hockey. So, really, really strange. You know, they got these weird ridges on the side. They're really hard to fit inside the Retron 5. Um, but you can get them in, you just gotta work at it a little bit. Uh, they play great. Um, the screws are weird, they have like washers underneath them. Uh, it's hard to see. But yeah, they're screws with, wa with small washers under them. And that's ridiculous. The plastic feels like a freaking toothbrush. Uh, I think I spent four dollars on these, um, but you get what you pay for. But I can play Mutant League football and hockey, you know, without much investment. So I'm pretty happy with uh, being able to play it on a console. Um, a lot of people will say, like, well, if you're just doing that, why don't you just emulate? Well, there's a lot of limitations with emulation. I'd have to haul the computer over. 
to in front of my TV, um, or I'd have to just sit in front of my computer. This way I can just plug it into my Retron 5, relax in my chair, and play some of these expensive games without having to, you know, worry about anything else. Um, this one is uh, an actual homebrew, so it's it's not a pirate and it's not uh, a reproduction. Um, Fix It Felix Jr. from uh, the classic Wreck It Ralph movie. Love that movie. Um, this is a homebrew based on the arcade game that that movie is based on. Um, super fun, actually. Very simple controls. It's just a D-pad and a single button. It very easily could have been a uh, Atari game, uh, well, with obviously downgraded graphics, but uh, you just you you're fixing Felix Jr. and you're jumping around in between windows, fixing them while Ralph is smashing the uh, the building from the little Duplo people. Um, it, it's it's really cool. Um, it, you should give it a try, or at least you know try it out emulation or watch a video for it or something. It's it's really cool. Um, Next, I got uh, Wild Guns for Super Famicom. Another monstrously expensive game, but an amazing game. Um, once again, really wonky backs to it, you know. Once again, the plastic feels like a toothbrush, just terrible, but for the price, whatever. So, a uh, Another one that I got, uh, this one's a little bit more, I guess less subtle um, of a reproduction. You'd have to look a little bit closer, um, but let's just call it like, you know, something to look for when you actually are looking to buy an expensive game. Um, and that's uh, Dracula X for the Super Nintendo. See, on a glance, this one looks not too bad, actually. Um, the subtle details that you'd have to pick up on is the spine you know it's it's a little bit different the colors are a little bit different but the label is actually not too bad on this um, fortunately there's no reproduction thing on the sticker you know usually I would, would like to see something like that um, the back you can tell from the back but that there's no Nintendo logo or anything like that and the disclaimer is not stock Nintendo um, the plastic feels cheap again but at a glance, it looks legit, right? Um, except when you try to open it. Um, these screws are in it, they look like normal screws for Nintendo with the security bit, except they're ornamental. They screw into like nothing. Um, and there's no space on the sides to open the clamshell. It's fused together, so you can't open it. So that would be your warning signal that it's a pirate, <laughs> so there's no way, way really around that. Um, but once again, <clears throat> this is a pretty expensive game now. Um, I can't even remember what it is now. It's over a hundred, I'm pretty sure. And uh, if you're going to spend that much money, you're going to take a long, hard look at it. And uh, the last thing that I caught, this is one of the most laughable um, pirates that I've seen, and I got it just on a whim. Uh, but it's uh, Shantae for the Game Boy. But it's actually supposed to be a Game Boy Color game, but it's in a Game Boy shell as the pirate. And I don't know if you can see it, but at the top, yeah, this is Game. It doesn't even say Game Boy. The plastic has a pink hue mixed into the gray. It's just ridiculous. And it's like, it's all just smashed together. Uh, very, very cheap. Um, but I guess it works, so whatever. But uh, I, I think this one's even a little bit too cheap for me. I'm probably gonna just get rid of it. Uh, yeah. So tell me what your thoughts are. Um, am I wrong? Are you know pirating and stuff the wrong way to go? Um, or should the good games of uh, our yesteryear be? only restricted to people who have tons of money you know I guess it's really based on you know people's characters um, if uh, there, there is people that could 
you know, misuse stuff like this. You know, try to um, take um, the shells from, you know, other um, legit games and uh, do proper labels on them and try to sell them off as such. But uh, as, you know, people that are investing into, you know, um, expensive collectibles, uh, I think it's as the responsibility of the buyer to really investigate what you're buying. And that's just common sense of everything in life, right? Money is valuable and you should be careful of how you spend it, right? But uh, yeah, let me know what you guys think. I, I, I suspect I'm going to get under fire for some of this, but that's okay. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Cheers.